Matthew chapter number 9 and Isaiah chapter number 58. You could go to Isaiah 58. I'm going to read one verse in Isaiah, or Matthew chapter number 9. We're going to be in our Bible this morning, but I want to read this verse of 19 in Matthew chapter number 9. The Bible says as he's speaking, verse number 14 takes you to the place of 15 as the question is asked in 14, but yet replied and responded to in 15. It says, then came him to the disciples of John saying, why do we and the Pharisees fast oft, but thy disciples fast not? Jesus turns and in verse number 15, his response is this. And Jesus said unto them, can the children of the bride chamber mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken from them and then shall they fast. When you look at 14 and 15, you see the question they're saying, I want to know what's so important and I want you to identify it in our life to why we do things and others don't. Jesus' response is simply by saying this, there's going to come a time where you can see me, but then you won't. And the only way that you're going to connect to me is to be able to empty yourself and deny yourself of who you are, what you want, what you deserve, so you can hear me talk to, me like, talk to you like I used to. Now this morning, let me go ahead and prepare your mind that typically there's going to be a lot of lost teenagers here today. There's going to be a lot of lost church members here today that are not going to be able to grasp what's really being preached or taught or teached on simply because there's not a lot of practice in it in your life. Kids this morning will be ignorant to a lot of the words, not because they're shallow, but because they don't see it practice much more in a mom or dad or even a church setting. Right. Let me make it plain. The, pr the proof will be in the pudding this morning. Amen. You say, well, why in the world would God allow something like that to be pressed? Because in 11 short years of my life, have I ever seen what I've seen God do for our church like I've seen Him do last week at camp meeting? And then Sunday morning for people to come in here and be able to praise God in the middle of the same state of the flesh when we're wicked and carnal and, and, and so busy with life, but yet people begin to worship God like they've never done before, still battling the same storms last week as they did two weeks ago. And the reason was because we emptied ourselves of who we were to see Him in a different way that we've never seen Him. Churches all across America starting at the 11 o'clock hour and this morning will get up and preach and teach and they'll share the word of God and choirs will sing and people will come together and they'll begin up to have an emotional stir but some will never see God the way he is simply because they can't empty themselves of self. If you want to have what God gave you at camp meeting, Understand, camp meeting ain't what God gives you. It's the presence and the intimacy that God gave. Amen. You say, but Brother Jason, the Bible says that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. You just said it. Are you hypocritical? Is the Bible contradicting itself? Why would he give me something then, but he won't give me something now? Why is it a camp meeting, but it's not going to be this week? I'm going to tell you why. God don't change, but we do. God will never change, but we do. Right. You're going to find out that this morning as you begin to think, how in the world do you get from the plateau that you're living on? Yes, you might be saved and you come to church and you sing in the choir. Yes, you shout and you raise your hand. Yes, you come to the altar. Yes, you carry your King James Bible and you can quote everything to lead somebody to the Lord. Hey, but let me ask you something. How long has it been since you changed gear for the Lord? How long has it been since you went from one level to the next level? You remember when you got saved and then you learned the first Bible? 
Bible verse and then you learn the first choir song. You remember when you begin to shout. You remember when you begin to pray. There were steps and you begin to grow to the Lord. But now there's so many of us. We don't grow like we used to. We don't talk like we used to. We don't go on like we used to. We don't have the passion. We don't have the zeal. We don't have the desire. We don't have the woe. And it's not because God's changed. It's because we change. You watch that Nathan's hot dogs. That contest, you kids see them on there and they take them hot dogs, they dipping them in the water and they're shoving and they're eating all the hot dogs. Them jokers can eat 50 or 60 hot dogs at a time. And what happens, they get to a plateau. How do you get to the place to where you can eat more, win the contest? You have to expand the capacity. That's good. Yes, sir. For a man or a woman that works out and waits, there's a consistent doing a bench press, but then you get to your two and your 300 pounds, but you can't go no further. You must change something. So you grab dumbbells. To a woman that is consistently to be able to live her life, that is losing her security with herself, she decides that, hey, I'm tired of the short haircut, brown hair, everything's fine, I always comb it the right way. So she goes to a beautician and she changes because she wants to see herself from a different perspective. But the amazing thing about it when it comes to the Lord is yet we just seem to think as long as we come to church and we read our Bible, we sit in there till 12 o'clock and we don't cause no ruckus. We don't let nobody see our sin. We're blameless. We're not out drunk, falling all over everybody, not sleeping around. We're not doing this or doing that. We're not causing church splits. We think we got it all figured out. Let me say this. God ain't in the business and he ain't impressed and he ain't interested whatsoever. Hey, with a youth group, with a church, with a choir, with anybody else, hey, that gets on the right path and starts living for God, Hey, but then all of a sudden begins to think, hey, because you've got to a certain place, hey, that you are settled, satisfied and settled. Hey, God wants somebody, hey, that never gets to a moment in their life, hey, to where they're satisfied with just what God's doing. Hey, he wants people to be more Christ-like, letting this mind be in you, hey, transforming your mind, renewing your mind, investing in your mind, not the things that's in the world, not the things that you find in people, but looking into the Word of God and the things of God and the songs of God and the preaching of God's word to where it penetrates your heart and the inside is changed to where the outside becomes to be the same. You know why some of us haven't reached anybody for the Lord but yet we've ate that 10 ounce steak and that 13 to 14 ounce steak is because we've invested more in eating than we have in telling somebody about Jesus. The story of two lumberjacks, one was young and one was old decided to have a competition, the young lumberjack went to him. And he says to him, he says, I want to have a competition because you're the old roost and I feel like we need to figure out who's really real here. So we're going to have a competition. Well, how many of us or how many of trees we could chop down in a day? They begin to start in the morning. They went to the evening. He noticed that he was running well because the young lad had looked over and every hour he would sit down and he would rest he would rest and he would rest and he was resting it came to the end of the day and they walked up and lo and behold he was amazed he says how in the world did you chop down one third more trees than what I did he said because when I stopped I sharpened my axe I got a lot of bass in here guys y'all need to fix me there's a whole lot of us that's trying to do so right. We're busy doing right, but we ain't got no sharp axe. That's right. Amen. There's a lot of us that's out and we're beating on life and we're trying to fight the devil and we're trying to fix our marriage and we're trying to do this and do that and do that and we're not getting a lot done. And you know why we're not getting a lot done? Because we ain't got a sharp axe anymore. And to get an ax, to be able to make a difference in your life, it's just like your marriage. It's just like everything that's going on. You've got to invest in it. You've got to take time. You've got to sharpen it, make things. You don't get it sharp by dealing with things that's going to make it dull. Somebody say amen. We'll go to the gym. We'll go to the pedicure place.
If I can have a competition, by the way, it's good to see another Dario worker with us today. Amen. If I can have a competition, I bet I can eat more coffee, ice cream, dipped in chocolate, and a waffle cone. I can eat more of them any day than them guys eating Nathan hot dogs. We invest in everything. If we can't hit a baseball, we'll get out there for hours to hit a baseball. If we can't sing a song, we'll come up here and practice to get the right key chain. We'll ride down the road. We'll listen to the same song. We'll sing it in the choir. We'll walk over here and practice with them. We'll do this and do that. But when it comes to living for God, that's on the back burner. And you want to know why you don't have the power you used to have. You want to know why you don't have the opportunity. You want to know why that God does not enlarge your coast as you've asked. And he used to. I'm going to tell you why, Mom. I'm going to tell you why, Dad. I'm going to tell you why, teenagers. Because of this. Is you're not realizing that you're going to have to slow down and be sharp. You know what that takes? It takes devotion. Yes, sir. Yeah. That's good. It takes devotion. Yeah. And I hate to say this, but I'm going to make it very plain to you today. A shallow church is made up of shallow Christians. And a lot of churches ain't making a difference. I, I'm going to tell you, and I mean this one churches that ain't making a difference is simply because there's a lot of people sitting there, they ain't sharper than the axe. When you begin to look into the life, you begin to realize there's a whole lot of us trying to do these things. The Bible says in Matthew chapter number 17, I preached this about four or five months ago maybe. He said, you shall say unto this mountain, remove hence from yonder to yonder. He said, but the only way to do it is by prayer and by fasting. Can I ask you something? When's the last time that you denied something in your life so you can see more of God? See, this morning, you're going to find yourself thinking, well, I'm here to get help, Brother Jason. I need encouragement. Listen, if you need something for God, you got to do it God's way. The reason you're not seeing God, the reason you ain't got the joy, it ain't the preacher's fault, it ain't the deacon's fault, it ain't your mama, your daddy, your wife, your husband's fault. The only reason you don't see God the way you need to see God is because you ain't taking time to get more of Him and take less of you. Amen. The fall of churches, youth groups, choirs is because we've got to be so self-sufficient. Self-sufficient. I said, Brother Jason, we just come out of a great camp meeting. I mean, 20 so people, almost 30 people has joined the church. Six people has got saved. I mean, man, we're going well. Let me tell you why. Hey, because I fail you as a pastor if I don't help you understand what the Bible says, not just to be able to get the emotional stir, but be able to maintain what you need to maintain. And I, I mean this with all due respect. We could get up here and have a great men's fellowship and we could do everything. Them men went fishing a couple of weeks ago. Man, they're out there. They weren't even fishing. Half of them were sitting around gossiping, talking. They try to talk about women doing that. Amen. But the number one question is, what are we going to do when we get back? How are we going to keep it going? I'm going to tell you why. Because a dream without some kind of plan is a fantasy. You can see yourself as a good husband, a good wife, a good Christian, being successful, marrying a good guy or a bad guy, but yet you want to date somebody that's wicked. Come yeah, right. on. And you want to know why we keep getting what we're getting? Because we keep feeding ourselves and not feeding our relationship with the Lord. Somebody says, Brother Jason, that ain't me. Today I've got a battle. I've got a storm that's in my life, and I'm trying to find my way out. I mean, I love God. I'm doing my very best. Well, God's trying to get you to the place where you get less of what you could do and lose control so you can give him control. That's good. Good for you. Let, let, me, let me break this down for you this morning. As you're thinking about these, there are four things that I want you to see. If you will, I want you to turn your Bibles to Zechariah. If you will, keep your finger in Isaiah. Chapter number seven, listen to this. The Bible says in verses five and six, it says, speak unto all the people of the land and to the priests saying, when ye fasted and mourned in the fifth and seventh month, even those 70 years did ye all, at all fast unto me, even to me. And when ye did eat and when ye did drink, did ye not, did not ye eat for yourselves and drink for yourselves? See, the principle of fasting is to be able to find yourself to where you realize that it's a cry for your soul. It's not a cry for yourself. You deny something that you want to be able to see what God wants you to see. So many of us come to church and, and we find out that here we're trying to, trying to live for God and get to this next place. And we forget about the whole principle of what it takes. Teenagers, let me ask you a question. Why is it every time you go to youth camp, 
no TV, no cell phone, no drama, no boyfriend, no girlfriend, you get closer to God than you've ever been before. You know why? Because you intentionally practice the abstinence of things that infears your life or affects your life to where it keeps you from seeing God. Mom and dad, newsflash, red light, alert, 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 wake up and smell the coffee. When I know why kids don't say the same, it's not because they're carnal wicked. Because why are you not the same as you was last year at camp meeting and just a couple weeks ago at camp meeting? How come you made a vow and didn't keep it as the Bible says to make a vow? It's better not to make a vow than to make a vow and not keep it. I mean, tell me why things are changing. Because you forget that it's the intentional. I mean, that means that you choose. It's something you want to do. That I am going to remove this from my life so I can see more of him. The principle of everything. And listen, I'm going to tell you, if your marriage has got problems, if your life has got problems, if your children have got problems, teenager, if you've got problems in school, I know you think, Brother Jason, I like pizza, I like hot dogs, I like corn dogs, I like steak, potato, meat, I like it all, praise the Lord, amen. But I'm telling you something, if you could feed yourself so much of doing what you want because you like this taste, you will argue with your mom and dad, and let me just say this to everybody, because it ain't just good for Tina, you will argue about what where you're going to eat to satisfy your taste buds. You will argue till you're blue in the face, a marriage will almost divorce because of where you're going to eat steak at. Why? Because of what I like. But yet we won't, we, we won't turn the TV off one night to see more of God in our family. Huh? We, and I'm going to preach myself right here, okay? We won't take a vacation by ourselves instead of going to other people so we can see God in a different light and actually have some intimacy with each other. And you want to know why there's so much division and so much heartache? It's because we're so busy. Your kids are screaming for attention. Daddy, hear me. Mama, hear me. But you're so busy doing what you want to do instead of what God's called you to do. Amen. TV, activities, games, people. Yes, sir. Phone. Yes, sir. You know my number one problem? You'll never hear my phone ring. You'll never hear it beep. You'll never hear it. You know why? Because I figured out how to turn this thing off. <laughs> but the phone's not turned off. So the problem that I have is this. I am teaching myself and proving to myself that I am picking up what's keeping me from the intimacy of my Savior and my family. Turn it off. First of all, you shouldn't be driving to Texan in the first place. Amen. Amen. But I'm guilty. God forgive me. Okay, I'm preaching it plain, but I got to be honest. But the whole time, a good time to ride down the road. And meanwhile, honeys, while you're sitting in the pastor's seat and your husband's driving and your face is buried into the phone, you're just as silent as what they are. Put your phone down. Amen. I, I mean, God, don't let me preach on this. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, Lord, have mercy. I got, give me another rabbit. Y'all seen the rabbits? I got about another rabbit to kill. Go ahead, preach. Yes, sir. Separating ourselves. If it really hurts, if the storm is really bad, if the marriage is really struggling, if the relationship is not what it needs to be, if you're really that desperate, when's the last time you started giving up what you wanted so you could see more of God in the situation? The principle of fasting. Listen, I'm not just talking about food. Hey, listen, I, I, used, to, I used to get up and I'd go to the gym every morning about five o'clock. I mean, I'd run wide up. Hey, listen. You might, you might need to take off time from the gym. Come on. You say, no, nah, that helps me. Okay, that's fine. If, if, if Brother Lyle, we just started going, didn't we? Amen. And we still got man bellies. Amen. <laughs> Imagine what we would do in morning if we would take that hour and spend time in God's word more than what we did on that treadmill. Amen. But you know why we can't do it? Because our flesh don't like it. That's right. Oh, how my flesh don't like it. No pain, no gain in the gym. Okay, but when you look in that mirror, your flesh likes it because you like what you see. Come on now. I mean, I'm not meddling, but I'm preaching. I might be meddling, but it's preaching too. 
So you find yourself constantly trying to feed your flesh and not feed the Spirit. Let me take you back to a doctrinal statement. The Bible says in, Gen in Genesis that God created man out of God created man out of dirt. Everybody say dirt. But the Bible says that then he breathed into his nostrils and gave man a soul. Everybody say soul. So without the Lord in your life, the value of your life is nothing without the Lord in it. Right. You're dirt. When we're feeding our face, but, you know, we don't cuss. We're not falling off a bar stool. You know, we're not causing division in the church. But when we're shoveling in all this food and we're doing all this, we're all about me. And we'll put so much effort into taking care of what I want and forgetting what God wants. We're feeding the flesh, not the soul. That's right. Number two, not only do you see the principle, but you see the purpose of it. Now, if you go back to what I said in Isaiah chapter number 58, I want you to notice what the Bible says, reading the first few verses. Cry aloud, spare not. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet. He should have shown my people their transgressions and the house of Jacob their sins. Yet they seek me daily and delight to know my ways. He said, as a nation that did righteousness for, and forsook, not the ordinance of their God, they asked of me the ordinance of justice. They take delight in approaching to God. Wherefore have we fasted? Say they, and thou seest not. Wherefore have we afflicted our soul and thou takest to, know, to knowledge? He said, behold, in the day of your fast, ye shall, ye find pleasure to exta, uh, ex, uh, and exact uh, all your labors. Notice this right here. Behold, ye fast for strife and debate and to smite with a, fist, uh, with a fist of wickedness. Ye shall not fast as ye do this day to make your voice to be heard on high. Do you know why you fast and you deny yourself? It's to make sure that God hears your, 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 your request. I'm going to tell you, and I mean this with all my heart. I have never understood why can't things continue to fail in my life when all I did was do my way and forget God's way. And I'm thinking, God, why don't you hear me? Why are you not listening to me? And then I wake up and realize the reason why God's not listening to me is not because God's changed. It's because that he don't see me emptying myself and I'm not desperate enough to where he will actually hear my voice. See, God's not interested with you pleasing yourself. God's in your, interested in you praising him. Amen. And when you deny your flesh and your want and your desires and your activity, you see more of him. I don't have time to go through this, but let me say this to you. If you're looking to get married, when's the last time you gave something up so you could find the right guy? If you're looking to fix your marriage, when's the last time that you put something down so you can actually have some talk and some intimacy one with another? If you're trying to make it through a storm, when's the last time you hung up the phone instead of calling somebody and got on your face before God and started asking God what's he want? When's the last time that you denied what you was eating instead of trying to eat at lunchtime that you actually took the time off and you went in your car and you sat down and you didn't take a nap but you actually got in there and you began to pray and talk to God? Hey, when's the last time that instead of trying to figure it out whenever you was having problems at school and going to talking about somebody, what if you took as much time to talk to God as you did talking about other people? The purpose of fasting is to be able to say, I'm to a place to where I want to make sure that my voice is heard for God to be able to put me in a place to where he knows that I'm desperate for him and I long for him. This is what verse number five says. He says, is it such a fast that I, might, that, that I have chosen? Notice it. he said, the day for a man to afflict his soul. Listen, it takes a humbling experience in your life for you to say no sometimes to what you want. You need to cry out from your soul to be able to say that there's got to be something in me that dies, that, that knows that, that I've got to let this go because everything on the outside is ruined. But until you get the inside changed, the outside's going to remain the same. 
You know why you're still dealing with that sin? You know why you're still dealing with that problem? You know why you're still letting that person, that circumstance, you know why that situation is still affecting you? It's because you won't deny yourself of self and you're still trying to figure out how to knock their head off, how to fix that problem, how to put money back in your bank account instead of getting on your face and asking God to be able to help you to balance out your checkbook. You're wanting to go work another job and another job so you can put food on your table and all you do is do and 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 the whole time you're doing your war slap out because you're not fasting I want you to notice this the Bible says here when you go on down verse number five he says that he says that here it was to spread out sackcloth and ashes he said will thou call this a fast and an acceptable day unto the Lord now I want to say this to you this morning the principle and the purpose of you fasting is simply for you to be able to get to a place where God begins to answer you and do something on your behalf. I'm telling you, and I've never said this before, but when you get broken, that simply means that you are completely done of all your self-sufficiency. When you begin to empty yourself, that means you deny yourself. That means you become to be weak in the flesh, and then you get broken. When you get broken, you say, I can't. And when you say, I can't, God says, I can God will then say, I've been waiting for you to do this. How many times in your marriage or home, your life, have you threw up the towel and said, oh God, I can't do it no more. And immediately God moved in to fix the problem. You know why? Because you learned to let go. I want you to see thirdly, very quickly, and I'm almost done. I want you to see the practice of it. Psalm 69, don't turn there. Let me read this verse to you. Verse number 10. When I wept and chastened my soul with fasting, that was to my reproach. I made sackcloth also my garment and I became a proverb to them. You know what he's saying? He's saying, I got to a place to where I was broken in my soul. He said, and then all of a sudden as things begin to change, he said, people were making fun of me. The practice of fasting is something a lot of people ain't going to practice and they're going to think that you're stupid for doing it. The more you do for God, the more critics you're going to have. Amen. The Bible says in verse number 12, he said, they that sit in the gate speak against me. He said, now everybody's talking about me. See, when you begin to fast, he said, your soul is broken to where you need God and you deny your body to where you say, Lord, I need you more than I've ever needed you. He said, but when you do, people's going to criticize you. The Bible says then, he says, and I was a song of the drunkards. He said, the drunkards were singing about me. Let me, let me just tell you this. I'll, and I'm going to tie it together in a minute. You can go ahead and come to the piano, and I'll, I'm going I'm to give you some meat to be able to help you on this. Leave your Bibles open because you're going to need it, though. If you're going to serve God, you're going to have a lot of critics. God is sick of people grabbing a microphone, taking a pulpit, carrying the Bible and living for themselves and not living for him. If your mama tells you no and you get mad, it shows that you're selfish. If your boss tells you no and you get mad, it shows you're selfish. You're so consumed with your way, what you know, and all the things that you possess. If your preacher says that you need to take a back seat, or maybe it's not time, and you get upset, it proves you ain't ready to do what you want to do. You say, well, he don't know me. No, your response proved it. Oh yeah, let's make it plain. So the preacher and the family and the mom and the dad, they're not painting a picture, you are. Because the way you respond in that rebellious shows your heart. And that's why God says you need to be broken. He said, because when you get broken, you're not self-sufficient. The Bible says here his soul was that way and people begin to talk about him. Let me tell you, there's going to be people that criticize. Listen to this. Man, this, this, this really is. He says, but as for me, my prayer is unto thee. He said, look, I'm not doing this for everybody else. Y'all start playing. I, I, I'm going to give you my last point. But I, 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 
teenager. If you want to keep your purity, don't do it because it's a camp. Do it because God told you to. Husband, wife, if you're going to keep your marriage, don't do it because it costs you so much to get in. Do it because God ordained it. Amen. Because, because when you get to the place to choose your own actions and it goes against the Word of God, it shows you're living for self. When you, want to, when, you want to, when you want to go back to the place and say, well, I don't need to be there for that. Now, listen, you're not making the preacher mad and you're not making the church mad. And we're not putting a little toe up here like you're in Sunday school and saying, brother, so-and-so wasn't here. Brother, so-and-so, they don't get a chip. They don't get a cookie. They're not going to get a little sticker this week. You're not doing that to us. You're doing that to him. And the reason we're not getting what we need to get is because we're not taking time to stay sharp. I want to say this, I guess as much in closing as I can. I'm out of time. I might go back and teach it or preach it on Wednesdays. If you go back to Isaiah chapter number 58, the Bible says there in verse number 6, Notice this, he said, the heavy burdens and to let, and to let the oppressed go free and that ye break every yoke. You know what he's saying there? He's saying that if you're going to get delivered, you're going to have to break what's holding you down. Amen. The only way that you're going to be able to do that is to be able to quit trying to do every program of what you think and start doing God's program. Listen to me. Some of you is getting distracted. I got five minutes before it's done. So just listen to me. <laughs> You're doing every program instead of God's program. <laughs> Look up here, teenager, young person. Thank God for a preacher. Thank God for a mom and dad. Thank God for a Sunday school teacher. Amen. Learn to get on your face and sound stupid in your flesh and ask God, God, what do you want me to do? Yes, that's good. Church member, visitor, learn to get on your face and say, I'm done. I'm broken. Because it's when you get broke that you get set free. There's nothing in your life that ever comes forth until something else gets broken. The Bible says, notice in verse number seven, he says that, he comes down, he said, is it not, I, lo I love this, he said, is it not to deal thy bread with the hungry? He said, and I'll bring the poor that cast out to thy house. He said, well, thou seest thee naked. He said, thou cover him, and that thou had hide thyself from thy own flesh. Listen, he said, how in the world are you ever going to break bread when you ain't got bread? The problem is you're doing everything. You're putting the cart before the horse. You need to get broke before God. Verse number eight, the Bible says this. Then shall the light break forth as the morning, and thy health shall spring forth speedily. And thy righteousness shall go before thee, and the glory of the Lord shall be in the, uh, in the rearward. He said God's going to stand behind you if you begin to get on God's side. Amen. Everybody look at me for a moment. You know why this seems to be so... so loose, so misunderstood this morning. I, I can see the Spirit. It might not be necessarily because I'm preaching something that ain't in the book. It might be because it's something we don't hear preached as often as it should be. Right. Amen. I could go down and teach the rest of this and I could do it, but let me say this. It's going to sound like a new gospel to you and you ain't going to like it. That's how we are. But you know what? If I got preaching on grace and deliverance and the storms, man, you could stay in tune because you know you can relate. But you know why we can't relate to fasting? Because we don't practice it. Amen. You're right. You know why it's preached? Because we don't practice it. You know why it needs to be preached next Sunday and the next Sunday and the next Sunday? Because we don't practice it. We don't practice it. 
And if we're going to see God the way we've seen God, then we're going to have to practice some things that cause us to see God. Because the Bible says in verse number 9, that that's what it takes to see Him. And there's not one person in here, I don't care where you are in your life, that does not have the desire to see God like you've never seen Him before where you are. So let me put it all in a nutshell and I'm done. How long is it going to take for you to keep making your schedule busy, doing everything you feel like you want to do and you need to do, to swallow your pride and realize I'm busy and I don't have a lot of trees falling. If you want more trees to fall in your life, take time to slow down and empty yourself and sharpen your axe. If you want to see God do something in your life, you better start doing something you ain't done in a long time. You say, Brother Jason, I can't go hungry all week. No, but you know what? You ladies will miss lunch to be able to go get your nails done, your hair done, because you want to get your hair done. <laughs> us men, by the way, I'm going hunting in three weeks. Somebody say amen. So I'm going to say, us men will go hunting and live off a pack of nabs all day just to see that 10-pointer. Come on, y'all, with me say amen. We'll go play ball tournaments all day long and not eat a thing because we're so desperate to win. Yes, sir. Some of you CEOs, business people, they got a lot of money. Those of you that's so, you know, blessed and hallelujah. When you got a project to be done, you'll go all day and not take a lunch because you know there's a timeline to get finished. Right. You deny Feed in your face. Feed my face because of what we want to get done. And God's sitting on the back burner the whole time saying, why don't you do that for me? 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 Heads bowed and eyes closed. Stand to your feet. If you need to get... As a pastor of Haynes Baptist Church, I want to thank you today for watching the video. If God's dealt with your heart today, we don't want to end without giving you an opportunity to be able to receive Jesus Christ as a personal Savior. I want you to understand no matter where you are in life today that God sent His Son to die on the cross for your sin. The Bible tells us for all of sin to come short of the glory of God. But the Bible does tell us very clearly how God loved us so much. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth Him shall not perish but have everlasting life. The amazing thing is, though, after that, that God continued on to begin to talk about His love and what the purpose of Christ was, because the Bible says in verse number 17, For God sent not a son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Today, if God's dealing with your heart and the Holy Spirit has told you that God wants to be able to save you through his son, Jesus Christ, and today what you must do is repent of your sins, realize that you are lost and on your way to hell. And if you are desperate, just like throughout all the Bible, throughout all the days and many of us that's in church today, there's only one way to be able to come to God, and that's through Christ His Son. The Bible says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there's none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. It's only through Christ and Christ alone. So I tell you today, as the Bible says, Whosoever shall call upon them, the Lord shall be saved. If you're lost today, would you trust Christ as your Savior? Would you repent of your sins, die to yourself, live for Christ? And let God do something in your life that you've never seen. If you've done this today and you make this decision, please call our church office at 788-0551 so we can make a record of this and we'll be praying for you. Thank you so much.